As President Lyndon B. Johnson once said, a president's hardest task is not to do what is right, but to know what is right. This helps people realize the responsibility brought about by this office and the leadership, humility, and intelligence that need to be shown by the leader of the free world. Here are 10 interesting facts about the highest office in America that you probably don't know. But first, can you name the first American leader in history? It's probably not who you think it is. Type your answer in the comments below and then stay tuned till number one to see if you're right. Number 10. The Best and Worst Who is the greatest president of all time? A great leader who led us through war like Franklin D. Roosevelt? A risk taker who helped keep a divided and divisive country from completely imploding like Abraham Lincoln? Perhaps a founding father that helped create the innovative constitutional republic we enjoy today like Thomas Jefferson? When one really thinks about it, this is a pretty difficult question to answer especially when one considers the subjective nature of political opinion and the evolution of societal progression. It seems like it would almost be impossible to name the greatest president in American history. However, that is not the case for the worst president of all time. According to the Siena College Research Institute's Presidential Experts Poll, which gathers the opinions of leading historians and political scientists after every new administration, one name is consistently at the bottom of the list. That man is James Buchanan who is listed as the 15th president in your history book, but number 44 in your heart. President Buchanan is rarely remembered by most Americans, and when he is, it's usually not for a very good reason. Beating the sitting president Franklin Pierce for the Democratic nomination in 1856, Buchanan was a longtime politician who had served five terms in the House of Representatives and was seen by most as one who could help calm a country that was divided over issues such as slavery and the deteriorating economy. Things did not get off to a good start, however, as Buchanan became seriously ill and almost died before he even had his inauguration. Once in office, things did not get much better as his views on slavery did not help to unite the bitterly divided country. Mainly voted in by southern slave and border states, Buchanan's position was seen as unintuitive and ultimately helped to lead the country into civil war. Add in the worst economy in decades, a bitterly split Congress, and multiple accusations of bribery and extortion by his administration, and it became clear that Buchanan was not the leader many had hoped for. You know it was bad when President Buchanan himself announced that he would not run for re-election after only one year into sitting in the high and noble office. Many historians have argued that if the Buchanan administration had not been so horrendous, it is possible that Abraham Lincoln would never have rose to the presidency and ultimately led the Union to victory in the Civil War. This does raise an interesting question, though. If some of our greatest presidents have their birthdays celebrated as national holidays, does that mean we should be forced to work a double shift on James Buchanan's birthday? Number 9. That Mountain is Looking at Me Deep in the Black Hills region of South Dakota, Mount Rushmore is the state's most popular tourist attraction, welcoming almost 3 million visitors every year. Bearing the faces of George Washington, Teddy Roosevelt, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln, these 60-foot sculptures carved in granite have since become one of the most iconic images in American history. The mountain, originally known as the Six Grandfathers, was chosen for the monumental undertaking to increase tourism in the area. The initial idea for the project was to carve the images of the Lakota tribe chief Red Cloud, Lewis and Clark, Buffalo Bill Cody, and the names of the American territories. It took over 400 workers 14 years to dynamite and sculpt the large granite mountainside, removing 450,000 tons of rock in the process, and it was completed in 1941. However, the mountain was also supposed to include Susan B. Anthony and the words of the Declaration of Independence before funding was halted and Congress declared the project complete. Congress had earlier threatened to halt all funding when the sculptor secretly carved out a secret vault called the Hall of Records behind the heads. Seriously, today, the Mount Rushmore National Park has made tourism South Dakota's second largest industry and represents American leadership, innovation, and expansion. And before anyone asks, to our knowledge, there is no secret treasure underneath the mountain waiting to be located by Nicolas Cage. Number 8. Pardon Me Sir 
with great power comes great responsibility. Or, in this case, having a powerful friend can be a great way to stay out of jail. There are many powers granted to the President, outlined under Article 2 of the Constitution, which includes the ability to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States. This power is largely limitless with few guidelines or rules, so a person can petition for clemency through the Justice Department's Office of Pardons at any time, as long as a federal crime has already been committed. Of the thousands of federal prisoners and ex-convicts who apply every year, the President can approve or deny as many as he wishes, including himself. Although this is not usually announced until the end of a president's time in office in order to minimize any possible political consequences, this was not the case for Gerald Ford, who granted his predecessor Richard Nixon a full pardon less than a month after becoming president. Ford, who was only vice president for eight months when the Watergate scandal forced the resignation of Nixon, would lose his campaign for office in 1976 and become the first person in history to become president without ever winning the election for the office. Giving former President Nixon a full pardon was seen by many as Gerald Ford helping his friend, as opposed to doing what was right for the nation. However, this is not an unknown concept throughout the history of the presidency. Being a close friend of the leader of the free world has helped hundreds of people receive clemency. The most famous example of this quid pro quo relationship was convicted murderer George Wilson, who was one of two men sentenced to death in 1829 following a deadly train robbery. After his accomplice was hanged in 1830, Wilson received a full pardon for his capital crimes despite never filing a request with the president. Despite being a close friend of President Andrew Jackson, Wilson actually refused the pardon and accepted his fate. It didn't end there though, as the case was brought before the Supreme Court in order to force Wilson to accept the friend's gift. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of Wilson though, and he was executed soon after. For the rest of us who don't know the most powerful person in the country, you probably want to keep carrying that Monopoly get out of jail free card around in your pocket. Number 7. It's all about the Benjamins. What does it pay to be president? $400,000 a year. Well, where do I sign up? For most people living in the United States, where the average salary is just $56,000 and 45 million people live below the poverty line, this seems like an obscene amount of money. However, for most former presidents, that's actually a massive pay cut. Many wealthy men have held the office of president, including the current President Trump and founding father George Washington, whose net worths were estimated at $3 billion and $700 million respectively. President Washington, whose salary, adjusted for inflation, would hover just below $7 million by today's standards, even made the promise during his inaugural address that he would not accept payment for his time in office. However, Congress saw this as fighting the ideals of the new democracy where the public servants are paid by the American people in order to serve the American people, so Washington reluctantly accepted. Today, the presidential salary is actually at its lowest point in history, and the president is responsible for his own personal expenses. Although, you do get free cable, which is totally worth it. Number 6. What do I do now? Nothing lasts forever, and the presidency is no different. No matter who becomes president or his standing when he leaves, the job always has an expiration date. This presents an interesting question for the former leader of the United States. What do I do now? The poster child for post-presidential life, Jimmy Carter, has shown the world that former presidents have a lot to offer. The 39th president has since become the most recognizable figure for Habitat for Humanity and has helped build homes for thousands of needy families. While that would be very inspiring just by itself, President Carter has also become a world-class diplomat, becoming one of the first Americans to enter North Korea after the initiation of their nuclear weapons program. Slowing down ever so slightly at the tender age of 92, Jimmy Carter has since become the longest retired president in history. Many other presidents took a different route when they left office, but still wanted to serve the American people. William Taft, the current record holder for the heaviest president while in office, became the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court after losing his re-election campaign. And John Tyler served in the Confederate House of Representatives until his death in 1862. Surprisingly left out of history books is Richard Nixon's retirement as a killer robot in the year 3000 on the TV show Futurama. Number 5. A House is a Man's Castle 
In order to be seen as a viable candidate for president, one must meet certain criteria. You must love to travel, show leadership traits, and for the love of all the Tolly, do not lose the nuclear codes. However, if you survive the geriatric fight club known as politics, you get a pretty amazing perk, the White House. Located at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the executive mansion was built in 1800 and has housed every president except for George Washington. The first tenant, John Adams, christened the new residents by hanging laundry in the East Room and writing an inspirational prayer seeking protection for the new residents. This was not kept in mind by the British Army, who burned the building to the ground 14 years later. The Executive Mansion, which is legally a museum, has since been rebuilt and currently has 132 rooms and 35 restrooms. This is usually expanded every new administration when new additions are made in an effort to make the first family feel more comfortable. From a heated pool and wheelchair ramps for FDR, to a flower shop and a bowling alley during the Nixon administration, these changes can help make life less stressful in the chaotic political scene. Today, the White House has become a symbol of the executive branch and is recognized worldwide, sometimes more so than the president himself. It has an estimated value of over $400 million. And the ability to bowl a few games with the ghost of Honest Abe Lincoln? Priceless. Number 4. It's Tradition it is the same story every November for people all across North America. We get together with family and give thanks. We sit down to watch some great holiday football, only to watch our favorite team lose again. Every year, almost 50 million turkeys are eaten by America's family during Thanksgiving dinner. However, just as famous as this holiday tradition is the annual presidential pardon of one of these turkeys. This tradition became in a surprising fashion with the Truman administration and has spared the lives of countless birds in the years since. What's so surprising about the origin of this annual custom, though? The fact that Truman ate his pardon bird. Since 1989, however, a new tradition was created. Every presidential turkey since George H.W. Bush's first term has had their lives spared. What actually happens to these lucky birds after having their lives spared, you ask? Well, they are sent to a rather extravagant chicken coop that sits on the former home of George Washington in Mount Vernon. Number 3. Wanna Get Away in the movie Air Force One, Harrison Ford gives a riveting portrayal of what life is like for the President of the United States in a grounded and completely believable performance. He shows what skills are required for someone to be the leader of the free world. You must attend meetings all over the world, make military decisions that can affect the lives of millions, and, of course, you must know how to properly say a memorable pun after breaking Gary Oldman's neck. Okay, so most of that isn't true. One thing that is true, though, is the amount of travel required by the president on a daily basis. A man whose responsibilities can affect the lives of millions of people needs to have a way to be in constant contact and protection. In 1880, when Rutherford B. Hayes became the first sitting president to travel to the West Coast, this was done with a presidential rail car and horse-drawn carriages. But this required the most important man in the country to be away from the White House for over two months. Today, the United States government maintains a huge fleet of cars and planes to make sure that the president is never unavailable, including two state-of-the-art 747s valued at over $200 million each. Despite usually traveling on presidential aircraft since the days of FDR, the call sign Air Force One is actually reserved for any airplane that the president rides in, and not simply for the iconic blue and white jetliners. Personally, I think we should go back to the days of single-digit horsepower just to see how Harrison Ford would get out of that situation. Number 2. Keep Your Head Down In 1939, a small movie was released with the brilliant title Murder Plane. This film, whose plot revolves around an undercover Secret Service agent infiltrating a murderous group of pilots, came and went with little fanfare. However, today, this classic B-movie has been renamed Secret Service of the Air and is known for its young lead actor, Ronald Reagan. 42 years after his performance came and went on cinema screens across the country, Ronald Reagan was on television sets worldwide, narrowly escaping an assassination attempt while being saved by the legendary Secret Service agents he once portrayed. Famous today for its protection of the first family, among other important officials, the Secret Service was established in 1865 to act as federal law enforcement agency, mainly investigating financial and counterfeiting crimes. 
However, the Secret Service was not tasked with the presidential protection until 1901, when William McKinley became the third sitting U.S. president to be murdered. It became clear that a solution was needed when the most common cause of death for presidents who died while still in the office was assassination. Lincoln himself had already survived two previous attempts to end his life and would not be the last president to be targeted. Receiving thousands of threats every year, the Secret Service has stopped over 30 assassination attempts since its inception. Unfortunately, this trend has not slowed down for the agents who put their lives on the line, as the former three presidents Barack Obama, George W. Bush, and Bill Clinton have avoided more attempts than the previous seven presidents combined. Number 1. Who's on first? The first person to walk on the moon? Neil Armstrong. First female Supreme Court Justice. Sandra Day O'Connor. First presidential leader in American history? George Washington. Or is it? General George Washington helped the United States gain independence, created the first national mint, and established the first Supreme Court. However, despite winning every electoral vote in the first presidential election in 1788, George Washington is not officially recognized as the first president. This honor is actually held by Peyton Randolph, who served as the President of the Continental Congress for 47 days. When the Constitution was originally written, there was no executive office and the Congress held all the power. By 1788, with the War of Independence against the British over with, Congress saw a need for a better system of checks and balances and the official office of the President of the United States was voted on and ratified. By the time of George Washington's inauguration in January 1789, 14 different men held the position of President of the Continental Congress and helped establish the executive office of today, including creating the official seal of the President. Did you get your answer correct in the comments below? If not, go ahead and tap that subscribe button to make sure you're always caught up on important historical facts. Otherwise, how else would you learn that Ulysses S. Grant was the first president in American history to have a mustache? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep along with other exciting stories, and we'll see you next time.